I mean, when I look at that now, I think, uh, what did I know then of what my life turned into? You never know mm -hmm. what twists and turns. And well, I was very fortunate that I went to high school when I did. We had a small school. Everything went smoothly. Everybody was nice to everybody else. We had no major problem. I had a large group of very good friends that did all kinds of things together, and we stuck by each other. I worked for Travelers Insurance when I was in high school and college. During the war years, they were very hard up for employees because most of the people were involved in either defense work or they were in the armed forces. So they came to the high school and offered us jobs. Any job you would apply for, whether you could do it or not, they'd hire you. She's a wonderful person. She's very smart. She's, um, she, you know, is, cares for people. And she's, I don't know what else to say. She's just been a very loyal, friendly, very fair human being. She's very kind. And as I said to you, she's smart. So I, I worked for Travelers for five years. And when I got out of college with my degree in teaching upper grades, high school age, the baby boomers hadn't gotten to that age yet and there weren't that many jobs around. So I went back and worked in Travelers, offered me a job one summer of interviewing college kids. And I had certain offers I could make them. And um, I discovered it was more than I was getting with my college degree and five years of experience. So I said, well, I'm not going to do this. Uh, if I can offer them more money brand new coming in, I want that much. And they said, well, no, you've gotten raises every year since you've been here. And I just didn't think it was fair. So I quit Travelers and I went to summer school for one year. I sat next to her in English class and uh, she was very quiet always and very determined to get things done that she wanted to do. When I was young, the two positions that were open to people were mostly working in an insurance office or a teacher or a nurse. Those were your choices. I took a job teaching first grade at Groton Heights. Yeah, okay. And I, it paid a little more because they have all the Navy families down there and they're in and out of school, which makes it harder on your class. I taught for one year. Okay, then you, where I you go? I had 37 kids in first grade in a bare room without even a book or a puzzle in it. Um, it was a year I worked myself to death. <laughs> it had been a library and they needed another classroom because they had so many children coming in. Mm -hmm. So they built a new classroom and I was a new teacher. So and then during the year I ended up with 37 first graders which mm -hmm. is an awful lot of small of first graders to have in one class. And how did you survive that? Barely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So from there you go where? And then I got married. And what year? 53. Yeah. And then by, I taught for the rest of that year. And then, let's see, then I um, got married. And when Fred got out of the Navy, we moved back up here again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was up here, I did substitute teaching. You were substitute teaching up until when? When did when the community house? Well, until house... they offered me the job with a co-op kindergarten. And that entailed a two and a half hour class in the morning. At the community and, house? And at the community house. Right. Well, so I did that for about five years. 
and um, then I had a couple of more kids, mm -hmm. and we built this house. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I got the chance to buy the Creative Nursery School. We needed 5000 That's right, you told me that, yeah. And everybody gave you a hard time. Yeah, uh, because a, a woman could not get And why did you let Ed... Um, I was doing it, and I knew what the circumstances, I knew what the cost was. I had a, uh, a very good assured income mm -hmm. coming in from mm -hmm. it. But a bank could not see giving a woman. I would have to have my husband co-sign. For it. So why didn't you have him co-sign? It was a matter of principle. I thought if I'm doing it, I'm earning the money, I'm paying it, I'm paying the taxes, why should I have to have somebody else co-sign? I either could get the loan, which seemed logical, or I couldn't. Well, anyway, I would go and they would interview me and they would agree to me at the time, but then before it would go to the board, to lend this woman $5,000, uh, they wouldn't do it. They said, you have to have your husband co-sign. Mm -hmm. I said, well, no, my husband is not, this is my deal, mm -hmm. and I can make the money to repay it. Obviously, I had a, a sheet that showed what the nursery earned. We had a very good reputation. But no bank, every bank I went to would agree to give it to me. But when it came right down to it, I would have to have my husband co-sign. Mm -hmm. At that time, I could not even take out a charge card at Sears in my own name. I would have to have it under, they'd send the bill to my husband. My husband did not pay the bill. I said, well, send the bill to me. No, we can't. We have to send it to your mm -hmm. husband. I was stewing one day to a man in town, Ed Lassman, who was a lawyer, about my troubles with the bank, and he says, I'll take care of it. I did not figure on hiring him at the time, and a day later he came with a check in his hand, and he said, I went to the bank, you got your check. I don't know what he did but he sure knew what he was doing. I don't know how many other good deeds he did in town. Mm -hmm. But at that time was when they were wanting to put in lots of different uh, new projects in town. And who was the lawyer for them all? Ed Lassman. He was at every zoning board meeting. And um, I, I was going at that time because the land all around my house was all being developed mm -hmm. and they wanted to put a 12-story uh, building over on Route 5 with a restaurant on top. So we would go to the zoning board meetings just to let them know we were there and we could ask questions and at that time uh, they were building lots more houses in town. I'm Ed Lassman was representing all these companies coming mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and I was actively against Opposed. But I hope that he was smart enough to know it wasn't him personally mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he had done so much for me. Mm -hmm. One thing my father understood is if, you know, what the town needed ultimately. And he probably figured that this was something that the town needed. They needed a nursery school or at that time, I think kindergarten wasn't public. Um, 
and they needed something like this and he you know that's why he probably stepped in and tried to help this woman out to effectuate it and make it happen you know he was very very sympathetic to small business people but thanked him plenty but i thought he would send me a bill and I kept waiting and thought, well, I hope he waits another week for the bill. I hope he waits another week till I have enough money to pay him. Mm -hmm. And I kept waiting and the bill never came. You look back 50, this was 50 years ago. Yes. How do you look back on that and, and think back on that today? Well, um, they say that uh, women are still fighting for their rightful place in the workforce and in social things that go on. I mean, we even have a woman vice president at this time, uh, which I don't think we would have thought possibly uh, workable back in those days. So we've come a long way. And I think today, um, even big institutions like banks have to be more careful about discriminating and treating, treating women differently um, than they used to. Used to be, you know, you were nothing. You were your husband's name. You were your husband's responsibility and he was yours. Whereas today you can more stand on your own, support yourself and uh, do what you want. And uh, we may have a long way to go yet, but it seems to me we've already done a lot. She was that um, that new age woman that could do everything and achieve everything. That she managed to have the family. She had a business when nobody else had a business, and she managed to balance it out with the old school way of everybody taking care of their family because she took care of um, everybody. Um, my great-grandmother, my great-aunt, her husband, my grandmother on the other side that um, of the family of my dad's side of the family and both of her parents, that she was the one who did everything. As far as being a mother and, you know, role model, uh, a teacher, what did you hope you taught your daughters? What did you hope they, they came when they look at your life? Well, one of the things that I taught my daughters that I think was very important was be kind. Go through your life being kind. If you can ever do anything to make somebody else's life easier, do it. And to support your family because they will be the ones in the end that end up supporting you.